When would you say that you last celebrated? Feasting and celebration are deeply biblical values and the Jews have continued to model this even through the darkest parts of their history. Even in the middle of the Holocaust, the Jews found ways to continue celebrating the Sabbath and many of them found that it helped them to maintain courage even when they were in the concentration camps. And yet, we seem to have lost the ability to celebrate well. Richard Foster, whose chapter on celebration in his book, The Celebration of Discipline, I would really recommend to anyone looking to develop this practice in their lives. He says, the carefree spirit of joyous festivity is absent in contemporary society. Apathy, even melancholy, dominates the times. Harvey Cox says that modern man has been pressed so hard towards useful work and rational calculation, he has all but forgotten the joy of ecstatic celebration. Only 3% of those that responded to my survey about the Sabbath said that they felt celebratory every or almost every week. And yet, this is such a key part to the Sabbath. This isn't to downplay the role of lamenting, but on the Sabbath we feast as we get a foretaste of what heaven will be like. Marva Dawn describes the day like this. Sabbath keeping is not a dry duty or an oppressive obligation. It is a delight, a feasting on that which is eternal rather than a scrambling after the short-lived success, the amassed wealth, the ceaseless activities, the elegant refinement that people think will grant them permanent happiness. To keep the Sabbath enables us to become more and more a Sabbath people and that characterization affects the way that we relate to everything else in our lives. Do we want to become this people? Do we want our Sabbaths to overflow into the other six days? Then we need to learn to feast and celebrate. I love this definition of celebration. Celebration is the honouring of that which we hold most dear. Celebration is delighting in that which tells us who we are. Celebration is taking the time to cherish each other. Celebration is returning with open arms and a thankful hearts to our Maker. In order for this to happen, we have to prepare for the day, like we would for a birthday or for Christmas. We need to find ways to make it special. Dan Alender describes it as a special day because it's the day when we have time to do the fun things that get squashed out of all the other days. He says Sabbath is the day where we feast, play, dance, have sex, sing, pray, laugh, tell stories, read, paint, walk, and watch creation in all its fullness. What habits can we develop to make the Sabbath a special day? It may be prioritising fun activities like those that Dan Alender talked about. It may be making special preparations and objects for the day, a special tablecloth or candles, cooking special food, inviting guests round, reflecting on the past week together, giving thanks, praying, reading a Bible story, a special notebook or craft set, special books. The possibilities are endless, but how can we make this a day that we look forward to, a special day? You may think, but I haven't got the resources to make these things happen. Several writers caution that Sabbath feasting isn't about gluttony, but about saving special food and other things for the Sabbath. And that actually what that often asks of us is living more simply on the other six days in order to make the Sabbath special. If the Jews managed in the concentration camps, then we can make it a special day here today. And if you count the days from the first day of Lent to the last day of Lent, it's actually more than 40 days. And the reason? Because traditionally people didn't fast from anything on the Sundays because Sunday was a day of celebration. And there's this stark difference between the six days and the day of celebration regardless of what season of the year or of life that we're in. 
a day for celebrating God and his provision for us and to celebrate our hope in his coming kingdom. But it also stops us thinking that it's through our works or our fasting alone that we get stuff done. Lent isn't about proving to ourselves that we can go 40 days without something. Our discipline is important, but we always need reminding that all of our efforts come from a place of trusting in and celebrating God and his work first. And God knew that we needed that reminder weekly. So he gave us the Sabbath. Let's be a people that enjoy his gift to us. Next week, I'll finish the Sabbath series with a story of what the kids and I did yesterday and how it further convinced me that God knew what he was doing when he told us that we needed a Sabbath each week.